Hello everyone. Once again welcome to the channel Chemistry Classroom Teaching Videos. Those who have not yet followed our previous video, please first watch the video Crystal Field Theory. Watch this video first. Crystal Field Theory. Basics of D orbital splitting part 1. You all please first, those who have not yet watched, please first watch this video, then follow this video. Okay, so directly let me move into the splitting patterns. First I will consider linear fit, linear ligand fit. We all know these uh, geometries I have discussed in my radius ratio chapter also. Once again I am telling you. Suppose I consider these as the z-axis, these as, as x-axis and these as y-axis. And I consider that here this hollow sphere is considered as the metal. Now if my ligands, you all know that in linear field the coordination number of the metal ion is so if the ligand approaches these dots are for the ligand, if the ligand approaches the metal ion along the z direction, that means along the plus minus z direction, then what will happen to the d orbitals of the metal ion? Just let, let's have a short recap of the earlier video. Those orbitals which will contain the z component the, those orbitals will be repelled much more by the ligand negative charges compared to the other orbitals, other d orbitals which do not have the z component. Now you know which which orbital have the z component? d z square have z component and d x z and d y z have z component. Now see among these three are all of the three orbitals similar? No. You know they are not similar. Why not? These two are similar because over here the lobes of the orbitals are in between the axis. That means here in between the x and z axis, here in between the y and z axis. But in dz square, the lobes of the orbital, of the metal d orbital is directly along the plus minus z axis. So it's obvious that since here the lobes of the metal d orbitals are directly along the plus minus z axis, so obviously the electron density present in the dz square orbital will be repelled much more strongly by the ligand field in compared to these two. And the other two which doesn't at all contain any z component will not at all be repelled or will be repelled in a very smaller extent and they will lead to stabilization. So obviously no need to memorize the splitting pattern. We can easily draw now by applying this concept. Now see, if this is my energy scale, I can say that this is my d orbital in the free ion. Free ion means what? When we have no external field. Okay? That means the ligand are at infinite separation or infinite distance. So this is my d orbital, free ion d orbital. So obviously we can say that in presence of linear ligand field, d z square will be maximum energized or maximum destabilized, leading to the other two containing the z component. And obviously the other two orbitals, that means d x square minus y square, and dz square will be stabilized in order to maintain the back center group. So this is the splitting pattern of linear fit. Now let me show you what will be the splitting pattern in presence of planar trigonal fit. That means planar trigonal geometry around the metal. You all know this. I have uh, shown in my radius ratio chapter that if I consider an equilateral triangle like this and consider that my metal ion is in the center, this monosphere, and my ligands are at the corners of the equilateral triangle. 
Now just let me draw the axis. I can over here I can draw the axis like this. See, I just rotate the axis for better understanding. This is my y axis and this will be my z axis. So this picture I can assume for a I can think for the planar trigonal geometry. Obviously here the coordination number of the metal is 3. Now see what's happening over here? See all the three ligands are present in the xy plane in the equatorial position. Here actually the z axis is basically the axial position which doesn't contain any ligand. So in this picture just the reverse of the linear field occurs. What, what reverse? That means the orbital which contain the x and y component will be repelled much more strongly by the ligand negative charges leading to their energization and those orbitals which contain the least amount of xy component or not at all any xy component they will be repelled less leading to the stabilization so what will be my splitting pattern over here once again i am drawing the energy scale See, okay, free ion, free ion D orbital, what will happen? See, which orbital contain the xy plane? Which metal or D orbitals? You all know this, D x square minus y square and D x y. Both of them will be same. They both contain the xy plane. Now see, the other three, that means dz square, dxz and dyz, they do not contain xy plane. But all, all uh, the three will not be in the same energy scale. Why? dz square will be slightly more energized than the other two, dxz and dyz. And you know the reason because dz square is actually the combination of dz square minus x square and dz square minus y square. So a little bit portion of the xy plane is present in dz square orbital. And for this, these orbital will be rippled a slightly more than this dxz and dyz orbital. Okay. So this is the splitting pattern in presence of a planar trigonal field. Now let's move to the next field. In the 
splitting pattern, what will happen? These will be maximum energized. And the other, that means which contain the XY component, will be stabilized in order to maintain the barycentered rule. So here it will come dx square minus y square and dxy in the uh, same position. And now obviously what left? The other two that means dxz and dyz which do not have any uh, uh, component of this xy plane also and neither also uh, we know that the lobes of these orbitals are not along the z-axis, they are in between the z-axis. So obviously they will be least rippled or not at all rippled. So this is the splitting pattern of the trigonal bipyramidal geometry. Hope you understand this. No need to memorize. Just try to think about the geometry. Just try to think about the logic behind the splitting. You can draw it by yourself. I am telling you. Just try to remember the points. You can draw the splitting pattern by yourself. Both in the exam and also after watching this video, okay? Now move to the next geometry. See, the next geometry is tetrahedral field. Tetrahedral field. Okay. 
the energy difference between the T2 and E set of orbital. Here I say it at 10 dQt or simple delta T. Okay. This is a T stand for the tetrahedral field. Now this extent of energization is actually plus 0.4 delta T or plus 4 dQ T. Okay. And this extent of stabilization is minus 0.6 delta T or minus 6 dQ T. This information for this tetrahedral field in addition to the splitting pattern we must remember for further problems. Okay. So these are the splitting pattern in presence of four field which I have discussed. Now please follow the next video that is D orbital splitting in various geometries part 3 for the other three splitting pattern in other three uh, geometries. Okay. Thank you.